auto-synced grading, and Google Classroom. Student engagement reports that you can share directly with families. Hand-drawn annotations and videos of yourself superimposed directly on top of Google Slides. Pre-created lessons teaching students about every single G Suite app and engaging games for them to practice digital citizenship. And those are just some of the 11 must-have tools for Google teachers that I'll be showing you in this video. Hey everybody, this is Sam Carey with New Tech Classroom. And on this channel, we show you how to use technology to create relevant, engaging learning experiences for students. Oh, and to make your job a lot more enjoyable too. Big shout out to our video sponsor, Wacom. Wacom makes Chromebook compatible tablets that are ideal if you're a Google teacher. All of us love them over here at New Ed Tech Classroom and use them pretty much on a daily basis. All right, first up on this list of 11 must have tools for Google teachers is Screencastify. Now I'm not gonna lie, I was on the Loom train for a while, but Screencastify has been releasing some significant upgrades over the past year and they just came out with some brand new ones that make this a must have for Google teachers. If you aren't already familiar, Screencastify is a Google Chrome extension extension that you can use to make video tutorials for students and students can also use it to record their screen and show their thinking. Once you're actually recording your tutorial, Screencastify has loads of different callouts that you can use to make your videos more engaging. So for example, you have different options for what you can do with a mouse cursor to draw students' attention to parts of the screen. You can even do things like set off some little fireworks here if you really want to point out a specific feature. And once you've finished recording your tutorial, Screencastify has a pretty sophisticated browser-based video editor that allows you to crop video out from the middle, do things like blur sections, and also add text. Now, Screencastify used to make you share your video link through Google Drive, which was one of the things that I didn't really like about it. But now you can share the direct link to your video that will take students over to the Screencastify page. You can still share videos via Google Drive, but the benefit of using the Screencastify page is that that's going to allow you to pull a report to see engagement data on that video. But what's even more impressive about this new Screencastify update is that you can now add checks for understanding directly into your Screencastify videos to make them interactive. It used to be that you had to download your Screencastify video and then upload it into another program like Edpuzzle to make it interactive. One extra step means one extra reason not to do it, but now the barrier to creating interactive video tutorials is gone. So Screencastify, if you're a Google teacher, you need it. Must have tool number two, Google's Applied Digital Skills. Somehow this program has flown under the radar for lots of educators, but you should consider it your number one resource for teaching students about the G Suite apps that you use in your classroom. It's 100% free to use, and because it's a Google program, of course, you can easily sync your Google Classroom roster to be able to upload assignments into Google Classroom. Once inside, you'll find lessons with activities such as creating a personal timeline in Google Drawings, making a promotional flyer, or designing a digital batch. Although most of these lessons have students practice tech skills by doing some other activity, there are also just some nuts and bolts lessons in here. So for example, if you need to just teach students how to use and organize Google Drive, there's a lesson about that too. Each lesson includes a lesson plan and sample rubric, and they're mostly made up of instructional videos like this one. To start, you will add a due date to complete each task. First, think of the order you want to complete the tasks. For example, you may want to study the chapters before taking a practice test. Now, if you want to assign this lesson to students, just click add to class, and that's gonna push the assignment directly to Google Classroom. So the next time you plan to introduce a new G Suite app to students, or if you just want to advance their skills, check to see if there's already a lesson you can take and use from Google's applied digital skills. Next up is quizzes, is quizzes, is quizzes. Quizzes is not a Google program, however, it does have a Google Classroom integration that I'm pretty certain you're going to love. Quizzes is a game-based learning app with loads of pre-created quiz activities you can use for just a more engaging way to review what students have learned. In quizzes, you can browse quizzes teachers have already made, and you can also use this search box up here to search for specific topics, as well as filter by grade level and subject area. Before assigning a quiz, be sure to import your class roster from Google Classroom. And this is where the magic happens. After you've imported your roster, click on a quiz to assign it. And then in the assignment creator, you wanna scroll down to assign to a class and choose one of your Google Classroom rosters. Click the purple assign button. And now when a student logs into Google Classroom, they just need to click on that assignment and they'll be taken over to the quiz. Students are gonna answer questions to play the game. And then when they're finished, they'll immediately see their score. Now that the student has finished the quiz, when you go back to your teacher Google Classroom and click on the grades tab, you're going to see the score the student got on their quiz 
automatically imported into your gradebook. Speaking of grades in Google Classroom, the next tool all Google teachers need is Schoolytix. Schoolytix is a data analysis platform that syncs with Google Classroom, and it's going to help you see student data trends, compare data across multiple classrooms, and more clearly understand grade distribution. The most powerful version of Schoolytix has to be purchased at the district level, but individual teachers can also get accounts for free. With the free teacher account, you'll be able to see big picture data for your whole class, such as the percentage of assignments that students turned in. And you can easily see the same information for individual students. Click on an individual student and you get an even more detailed report about all the assignments that student has completed, which you can easily convert to a progress report. There are lots of useful data points in Schoolytics. For example, you can pull a missing assignments report, or you could pull a disengaged students report so you could quickly see who needs additional support. You can set up Schoolytics so that it auto notifies teachers about risks and patterns in their classroom, and you can also have it auto notify students about missing work or upcoming assignments. And there's a student specific portal here that they can use to monitor their own progress, as well as a parent portal, which allows parents to click on each of their students' classes to see grades, percentage of work completed on time, missing assignments, and so on. Next up, Flipgrid. Now you might be thinking to yourself, wait a second, isn't Flipgrid a Microsoft product? Okay, maybe you're not thinking that, but it is. So why is Flipgrid in a Google Teachers video? To start, Flipgrid does of course easily integrate with Google Classroom, but that's not all impressive in 2021 because pretty much every program does that already. But Flipgrid does have a new feature that's going to allow you to create videos where you put yourself directly on top of slides, just like I do in mine. The difference though is that with this new Flipgrid update, you don't need a green screen or fancy video editing software to do it. With the new Flipgrid camera, you can now add your own custom background. That background can be an image or video, or you can share your screen as the background. Then let's say you had a slide deck pulled up. All you need to do is select it, and you can see that you'll get that green screen effect without actually using one. You can drag yourself around, size yourself down, and then hit the record button to record yourself making an instructional video. Making video tutorials like this is not just for online learning either. Think remediation, accessibility, or pre-recording lessons that you can use to open up your time and space in class to pull small groups and work with them. Oh, and this feature works for the student camera too. Since we're on the topic of Google Slides, don't you wish you could draw on top of them? Well, you can with one of my all-time favorite Google Chrome extensions, annotate.net. Open up annotate.net, and just like that, you can draw directly on top of your slides. And yes, this also works in present mode. Of course, you aren't limited to slides. As long as you're in Google Chrome, you can pretty much draw wherever you want. Now, the ability to draw on your screen with an extension is not entirely new, but Annotate has a couple key features that are the reason why it's made this must-have list. One feature is this eraser tool, and when you pick it, it's going to erase the entire text with a single stroke rather than making you trying to actually erase it, which I just find super annoying. Importantly, your annotations are also sticky. So if you write on one slide and then click on the next slide and write again, and then toggle back and forth, the writing is going to stick on each slide. You can also quickly take screenshots of this directly with annotate, and you can even save your annotations so that the next time you reopen your slides from the annotate dashboard, the exact same annotations show up. Damn! Next, if you really want to take annotations to the next level, you're going to need to get yourself a pen tablet. I think pen tablets are pretty much a must have for any teacher that uses technology because they allow you to write with your hand the same way that you would with a pen or a marker. Wacom pen tablets are platform agnostic, so anytime there's a draw tool, you can select that draw tool and you can use your pen tablet to write on the screen. So of course, this is going to work for programs like Google Jamboard, or it would also work when you're using other Chrome extensions like Kami. And of course, you could use that annotate extension and use annotate to draw draw anywhere you want in combination with your pen tablet. So basically, instead of looking like this, so annoying. you want to look like this. Now for Google teachers, I think Wacom is the way to go because Wacom tablets are fully compatible with Chromebooks and you can plug your Wacom tablet directly into Android devices, which means you can write on your smartphone or tablet too. Pretty awesome. Speaking of awesome, next up is Be Internet Awesome, a brand new free online digital citizenship curriculum by Google. Be Internet Awesome has undergone a rigorous review to receive the ISTE seal of alignment. Be Internet Awesome teaches students important digital citizenship skills like being aware of sharing online, not falling for fake news, understanding how to secure your secrets, treating others with respect and dignity online, and feeling comfortable to talk to adults and teachers if they come across something questionable online. 
Each of the categories includes pre-created lessons, so you're not bound trying to recreate the wheel. And students practice digital citizenship skills by playing these fun, interactive games. Since you're watching this video, you almost certainly know about our next tool, Pear Deck, which allows you to add interactive questions to your slides. And you probably also know that Pear Deck has pre-created lesson templates, but you may not know that Pear Deck just released some templates to help you teach Be Internet Awesome digital citizenship lessons. To find these, just search Pear Deck Be Internet Awesome, and then scroll down to Install Be Internet Awesome. And that's gonna add a bunch of files to your Google Drive. Open them up, and you'll see Google's Be Internet Awesome curriculum already created for you as interactive Pear Deck slides. Now, another thing is that if you have Pear Deck Premium, there's also a relatively new Pear Deck feature called Reflect and Review that's going to allow you to review individual students' Pear Deck slides and give them feedback on those slides for students to see. So Pear Deck's always been a must-have tool for Google teachers, but they keep adding new features that make it even better. It seems like every time I blink, one of the most powerful Google Chrome extensions, Moat, has added some new features. Moat started out by allowing you to add voice notes in comments on Google Docs, with a simple click of a button. Wow, these video scripts must take you a really long time to write. Then they added a voice notes feature in Google Slides, which allows you to record a voice note and then drop it anywhere you want. Hello. And then they added their purple M icon to Gmail to help make your email more accessible. Hey, that's pretty cool. And they also integrated with forms so you can add voice notes there too. And now Moat even has an app. Why does this matter? Well, the problem is that extensions and add-ons don't work when you're trying to access them via a tablet or a mobile device. So if students only have smartphones and you leave them a voice note, they'll have difficulty accessing your voice note from home. But now with the Moat app, you can open up Google Docs, tap the purple M, and then you can leave a voice note from your phone that students can also listen to from a smartphone. Last on the list is Google Arts and Culture, an incredible resource for teaching students about art, science, history, geography, you name it. One of the many things you can find in Google Arts and Culture are lots of these 360 degree videos. These are just more interactive, immersive videos that students can watch to learn more about different important historical sites, or they can learn more about things like space shuttles, like this video. You would have one set of crew members who were hovering around the floor doing yeah, experiments. Coming over the top here. Another two that were up here, people floating down from the flight deck. You'll also find interactive museum tours on Google Google Arts and Culture, as well as multimedia rich information. Really the main feature of Google Arts and Culture though is that they've gone in and photographed all the major works of art from all the museums really all around the world. And what this looks like is that students can go in and they can check out works of art and they can zoom all the way in to see the contours of the paint on the canvas. It's pretty cool. There are also just lots of different multimedia rich resources about lots of different topics here. So I definitely suggest you check out Google Arts and Culture as a supplement to your curriculum. And if you're still looking to up your Google Teacher game and you wanna learn more about the best Google Chrome extensions for students, the best Chrome extensions for teachers, the best slides add-ons, the best Google Forms add-ons, then be sure to check out that playlist above.